In this video, I will look at doing a vector to raster conversion in QGIS. So, although this might seem as a really simple thing to do, there are some details that are so annoying if you get them wrong. So, you know, let's look at those details and um, hopefully your life of converting vector to raster in QGIS will be much easier. So, if I switch to QGIS and uh, just uh, get rid of me. Um, we can see I have two layers I can work with here. I have a got rid of my layers. Hmm. View and panels and layers. Um, so I got my vector layer and my raster layer here. And I know that I'll be using this vector layer together with the raster layer for some later operations. So it's important that when I convert my vector to raster, that the raster I create matches the cells, cell size, not only the cell size and coordinate system, but also exactly where the borders of the cells are located. So therefore, when I do a conversion so I we can of course do it from the raster and then we can do conversion and then rasterize here um, I often prefer to do it from down here so it will be under gdale and vector conversion and here we have different versions that we can we can burn into an existing so if you really want to be sure that things are working right you will use one of these but this one that converts a vector to raster will be fine if we do it right. So we have our buildings. Um, we can now write a attribute from the the layer down. So the if ID or something like that. Test I've made. Um, we you can only write integer values. So um, be careful that you know if you want to write an attribute down, it has to be an integer attribute. So, but in this case, I just wanted to write, create a true false layer. So true where there's a building. So I will have one. Uh, the units. Ah, uh, yes. Where do I know what the size of the units are? Um, so if we look in our layer here and properties on it. Now one information. It says up there here what the coordinate system is. Interesting here is that it has a pixel size of 0.4 meters. Okay, so that's what the information I want to need for this. So I can now go and do my conversion uh, where I say one and my units that you re referenced, and they are 0.4 and 0.4 and my extent and this is the really important part so now i set the size as the same as in my the one i want to match with but i also have to make sure that the extent is exactly the same so be sure to use the extent of the raster layer you want to work with later so go under use layer extent and then choose the extent of the raster layer want to work with so now I've set this one and I can write a if I need a no data I can put a no data value in I can uh, also because what I really want is I want this to be a true false layer if I just run it as it now I will have a true no data a one and no data but if I change this one to a zero and then I can set my integer here. Yeah? So now this is just because it's um, it's always a problem with decimal values that uh, that if you can avoid them, please do that. It um, makes life better um, because exactly one and exactly two might be difficult to get in a decimal value. So I prefer to have them as integers if I'm knowing I'm. A, 
um, I don't need the decimal values. So integer, and I'm writing down as zero. So all cells will be first set to zero, and then those that are buildings will be updated to a one. So that's a, a little advanced thing we can do here. And then we can run our little process here. And we have now rasterized our buildings. The trick we can see is that um, if I go in and now change the way that is symbolized. If I go and say properties, because this no longer needs to be a single layer gray as for photographs, satellite data. It's going to be a palleted because there's only some unique values. So I say palleted unique values, classify, gives me the one and the zero. I can now remove the zero. So I only got the ones and say OK. And what we hopefully now can see if I zoom into some little tricky corner is that these raster cells exactly line up with the raster cells in my um, digital uh, surface model. So because I used exactly the same size of cells and the exact se same extent, then the cells will match. So that's the important part to watch out for when you do this. Make sure that you have exactly the same extent and cell size. You can also see here that there is some different ways of converting here. Um, you might wonder why this one is not a building. And that's because what QGIS does is converts, says if the center point falls outside and this one, the center point is just there. So even though this might be more than 50%, um, it will not be converted to a building raster because the center point of this cell is outside. Um, in um, and when we do this type of conversion, there are some um, some different rules. So, um, but the standard is that you use the center of the cell, and that's a good approach because you don't overestimate any values or underestimate any because it's more or less random if the center point is in it. You can, if you're using RGS Pro, you can choose that the largest one with the largest area. So if you have two polygons, vector polygons, then the one with the largest area when the cell will win. Um, you can also have a, um, if you have many different, you can have the maximum combined and so on. And there's also a highest priority. QGIS, only the center one. But we can do things. So if we want to make sure that we have that, um, if just a corner or half of it is win, we can do a little trick. This trick is first to do our conversion at a fraction of the desired size. So for instance, so instead of having 0 0.4, having 0 0.1. Then we can resample the data with statistics. So what the resample does is that it resamples them from the quarter of the size to the original size, but then sums up the values in the quarter. So that means that um, if all of our polygon was a building, then it will have a value of 16. If only one quarter of it was quarters in both dimensions so there are 16 of them um if, if only one little corner is part then it will be one and once we've done that we can use our raster calculator we've been using earlier to do a conversion to a true false layer by comparing the value in our resampled of say if it's larger than eight then that's more than half if it's a large, a strictly larger than seven, then it's half or more than half. So that's the, you know the different variations we have. You can say if it's larger than one, then any. If just part of it is in a uh, 
vector, then it will be converted to our raster, or you can say larger than 15, and then all of the, our cell has to be within our vector for it to be a raster. So let's try that in the QGIS. So if we go back here and uh, do our rasterize again on our buildings, and we'll again use a value of one, and we'll again set them to geographic, but this time we will set them to 0 0.1. So 0 0.1, I said, and 0 0.1. Again, very important, make sure that the extent is something that matches and that this fraction will, this is a fraction, so it fits to uh, our side layer. Again, we can set a negative and no value, don't really need it. And we will set a zero and we will convert it to integers. So. We are now better to tidy a bit up here. So this one was our original, and we rasterized to 0 0.4. So let's call it 0 0.4. And this one was where we rasterized to 0 0.1. Um, so we can see that if I drag this one on top, these are four times larger than the other ones. So now we've done this, we uh, can do our resample instead. This um, type you can see it's from the grass. Just type resample instead. Yeah, I just take it from my dot cut, and I now. As my input, use my rasterize 0.1. I'll set it to calculate the sum when it aggregates. And I want my output to be, I oh, never mind that one. Uh, this one down here, I want to be 0.4. So, so now I've said I want to aggregate to 0.4. And I want to calculate the sum. And do the aggregation. So it's done that. And you can now see I have this layer which has the same size, but now I have different values in here. So um, this layer I now have created, my aggregated, has values between, if I can get it up top here, values between 0 and 16. So in the buildings, let's see that I can bring the buildings up and maybe change symbology to just have a, oops, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to say a no brush and a line. So, so we now can see the outline. So here we can now in this aggregated layer, we can say that this cell here at the at this corner here, I now I aggregated the buildings, got my free sampled there. Uh, is there and it had a value of six so this one had six of the quarters in it that was part of it um so then i want this corner to be part of my new buildings i can when i do my raster calculator i can find my raster calculator and i can use my resampling aggregated I can say okay if more than five 
So that is if more than five sixteenth of a cell is inside the building, or I could say if more than more than zero, and if just any one corner of the building is covered by the vast, and then it will be converted. So now, hopefully, my buildings will be much larger. Or I could say like more more than sixty or fifteen. So I said this. I have to set in this case. It's really important that I set my reference layer down here in the calculator. So whenever we do the calculator, we instead of setting all these parameters, we can just set our reference and run this. I'm not get now is this layer. So my new output layer. So um, let's call it uh, oh, building this touch or something like it. So if the raster cell just touches the building, then it will be. Um, Part of the building, and I'll just change its symbology to get rid of that one, and maybe change this one so we can see the difference off the screen. Bring that back, set it to yellow each color. Okay, so this one now. Is constructed so that if any part or at least almost any part is covered by a raster, it is part of it. The original one, which was this one, will have a bit less. Come on. Um, that's. Um, So you can see this was my original. And let's have the so these are so the vector is the building layer. So this the red ones is by the center and the orangey green yellow things are the ones where just one of the sixteenth fit in. So depending on how we want our conversion to do, we um we can convert first to a smaller grid. So using this trick of um, saying first convert to a raster that has a fraction of, of the desired size, so typically a quarter, then running this r.resample.stat to calculate it back to the original size, but we're calculating the sum of ones and zeros there, and then using the raster calculator to decide which rule we want to use on our calculation. So these are the basic um, simple rules for, um, for for doing vector to raster. And the really important thing is to ensure that whenever you do this, um, make sure that your raster layer aligns with your desired raster layer you're going to do the calculation on. So I um, hope that uh, this uh, will save you a lot of uh, frustration when working with vectors raster conversion in uh, QGIS because that can really be annoying things if the raster cells do not align. So, hope it was useful.